Hi, Dr. Goldberg here, continuing our infectious disease lecture series. Today we're talking about infectious mononucleosis, uh, most of which are caused by Epstein-Barr virus, uh, which is a herpes virus, along with HSV-1, HSV-2, CMV, and of course uh, chickenpox and right. herpes zoster. There are other herpes uh, viruses, these, uh, but these viruses are latent viruses. Once we're infected with these viruses, they're basically with us forever. So EBV is associated with most cases of infectious mononucleosis, uh, approximately 85%. Uh, CMV can uh, certainly cause uh, uh, the other uh, infectious uh, mononucleosis cases. And over the years, I've seen absolutely miserable cases of infectious mono. But fortunately, most people have fairly mild disease. Uh, about 95% of the world is uh, seropositive for EBV, especially in industrialized uh, nations. Between the ages of 1 and 5, about half of the, of the people uh, have developed positive antibodies to EBV. Uh, and prior to one year of age, maternal antibodies uh, are protective. Primary infection of young uh, of the young results in non-specific illnesses. Uh, typically, see we see infectious monos in those people who have primary infection during or after the second decade, such as adolescence. In the U.S., the incidence is about 500 cases per 100,000 persons per year, uh, and the highest incidence is really between the ages of 15 and 24. Uh, EBV is associated also with Burkitt's lymphoma and nasopharyngeal uh, carcinoma. Uh, the organism is spread via saliva, i.e. therefore called the kissing disease, and can stay latent in B cells, which act as viral reservoirs uh, over the lifetime of the individual. Incubation period is generally between 30 and 50 days, and the classic symptoms, of course, are sore throat, <clears throat> terrible tonsillitis, malaise, fatigue, uh, and, of course, fever uh, with lymphadenopathy, especially a septal lymphadenopathy behind the neck. Uh, uh, but you, people can have it all over the, uh, all over the body. Also seen as palatal uh, petechiae, periorbital edema, rash, hemolytic anemia, thrombocytopenia, aplastic anemia, TTP, HUS, DIC, Guillain-Barre syndrome, meningoencephalitis, uh, especially caused, you know, especially affecting the cerebellum, splenic rupture from the splenomegaly, uh, and even upper airway obstruction related to the bull neck sometimes seen with the massive tonsillitis. EBV can also be a trigger for hemophagocytic lymphohistiocytosis. So the majority of patients with infectious mononucleosis uh, recover within three to six weeks. Uh, of course, the labs were looking for a lymphocytosis or a right shift with atypical lymphocytes, usually more than 10% seen on the smear. And the monospot test for heterophile antibodies has a sensitivity of about 85% and a specificity of about 94%. Um, IgM and IgG. Uh, serology testing can be definitive. Of course, IgM uh, positivity is going to be seen in primary EBV infection. Uh, supportive care is the uh, really the treatment. Uh, Tylenol or NSAIDs uh, and rest. Occasionally, we'll use steroids, especially if there's a extremely enlarged uh, tonsillitis. Caution against any contact sports for at least three weeks due to the risk of uh, splenic rupture. Uh, but there's no conclusive evidence that antiviral agents are effective in EBV. So hopefully this uh, <clears throat> gives you a little, uh, some, some uh, bullet points on uh, this infection. Thanks, Dr. Goldberg, signing up.